Hey, what's going on friends? Thomas Frank here and welcome back to Notion Fundamentals. In this lesson, we are talking about creating links to your Notion pages within your workspace, along with creating pages and subpages. These are pretty related topics, so I am mashing them together into one lesson. This is part of Notion Fundamentals, the free and completely open Notion basics course here on YouTube and over on my website as well at thomasjfrank.com slash fundamentals. If you have been following along so far, you are probably aware that we are creating an example project because this is a action-based, project-based course, which is this personal dashboard here. And in this video, we are going to be taking this personal dashboard that we left off with in the last lesson on page layout, and we are going to be adding the links that you see here on the actual template version of the personal dashboard. So just to give you a preview, we are first going to go over how to create links to other pages, and then we are gonna finish up this lesson by telling you how to actually create new sub pages inside your workspace. Uh, before we get into creating links though, I do wanna show you what a sub page really is. So something that is unique in Notion, or at least different than some other note-taking apps out there like Evernote, is that you can create basically an infinite number of nested pages inside your workspace. So if I come over here to this uh, sidebar that we have here in this test workspace, I can open up this writing page and inside there is a books page. And that's not just here on the sidebar. If I click this page, we actually see that books is a block, a page block that is sitting on the page. And if I click into that, then I have another page block sitting there. And we can sort of drill down and create as many nested pages as is necessary for our workspace. Additionally, the sidebar is not the only way to navigate our workspace because we can create links from any page to any other page in many different ways. And that's what we're gonna start doing right now. So I'm gonna go over to this little personal dashboard that we are working on, and I'm gonna show you one of the first ways to create a link here in Notion, which is the link to page block. So instead of these tasks here that are just checkbox blocks, I wanna have an actual link to the views here in this ultimate tasks copy that I've got here in this uh, sample workspace. Specifically, I wanna link to my today view. So there are a couple of different ways that I can do this. And the first is to simply create a link to page block. So I'm gonna come over to my dashboard here and you can create this anywhere in your workspace. But if you type the slash uh, character to get that slash menu and then just type link, you're gonna get this link to page option. And if we click that, we are going to get a search prompt where we can actually search for whatever we want. So I'm gonna search for that today page and it's gonna come up and I'll click that and now I have a link to page block on this page. Now what is interesting about the link to page block specifically is that I'm going to get this link right here but just like I showed you over here with these actual page blocks, I'm going to get a link in my sidebar. So something that I really like to do is to create personal dashboards which I then favorite using the star up here so it's up in my favorites bar. And then I will create these links to other places in my workspace, which are then accessible from the sidebar in my favorites area. That way I don't have to favorite tons of different pages. I can just favorite one page and then twirl it open anytime I wanna access all kinds of other stuff. There is another way to create a link to page block and that is simply by pasting the URL. So I'm gonna go back to ultimate tasks here and I'm going to grab my tomorrow link. So if we hit control or command L, I'm going to copy the URL to my clipboard and then I'm gonna come back over to my personal dashboard and I'm just going to get my cursor on a new line. And if I paste this URL, it's gonna give me three different options. Dismiss will literally just leave this URL on the page, which I don't want. Mention will create what's called an inline link. We're gonna talk about that next. And then link to page actually creates that link to page block. So you're gonna see in my sidebar, I now have today and tomorrow. To get parity with our actual uh, template here, we also need next seven days and habit tracker demo. And then we also need the Thomas Frank's note-taking system demo link in the notes area. So I'm gonna go ahead and create those right now and speed the camera up. Okay, so now we have all of our link to page blocks here on this personal dashboard, and you'll see that all of these are now in the sidebar as well, which means they're easily accessible. But there is another way to create links in Notion, and that's to create what are called inline links. These are actually in line with uh, text, and they also do not show up in the sidebar here. And the way to create those is, number one, if you were to just post, uh, paste a URL here, you could choose the mention page option, and you will notice, if I go and delete this one, just as a example here, that the page mentions are not shown 
and the sidebar. So that's useful if you don't want to clutter up your sidebar. The other thing that these allow you to do though is to create links inside of lines of text or even inside text that are in other types of blocks like checkboxes. So as an example, let's go and look at a sample task here in Ultimate Tasks. And I'm actually just going to go into the today view and mentally make a note for uh, create homepage. So if we're here in the personal dashboard and I've got a task that I want just in a checkbox here, um, if I created a checkbox block, I could just say, uh, don't forget to, and then I want to link to that create homepage task, which is actually a page itself in Notion, using an inline link. And I can do that by typing double bracket. So bracket, bracket, and that instantly gives me this little search box for creating an inline page link. And I'm going to go for create homepage, click that. And now I have an inline link and I can type text after it. And if I click it, then I get right to this page inside of Notion, which is inside a database. We are going to be covering databases in the next lesson. So don't let all these crazy properties here uh, overwhelm you. They are just database properties inside of a page. One thing that I do want to mention before we go back to the dashboard is that when you create links to pages inside your Notion workspace, you also create what are called backlinks. So now that we have created this link to create homepage, this page here, you'll see that we have one backlink, and if we click this, we actually can see that we have a backlink from our personal dashboard. If you're coming from Roam Research or another tool that is similar to Roam, um, you'll notice that the backlinking functionality isn't quite as powerful as it is over in Roam because you don't see exactly where the backlink is. You just get a backlink to the page containing that link. Still quite useful, but not quite at the same level of functionality. Uh, additionally, if you come over to the three dot menu in the corner and you hit customize page, one thing you can do is change the way that backlinks are shown here. So right now they're shown in that popover like I showed you. You can click expanded and they're always going to be showing by default, or you can even turn them off and they're completely hidden from display. Going back over to our personal dashboard, the double bracket command is not the only way to make an inline link. There are actually two other commands, uh, both the at symbol and the plus symbol will do roughly the same thing. So if you type the at symbol, you're going to get the same search prompt, but it defaults to either mentioning a date, a reminder, or a person. So using the at symbol is primarily good for those functions. However, if I do start typing a page link, I'm going to get it just like I did with the double bracket. Uh, additionally, you can do the exact same thing with the plus syntax. I need to get back to another line. And you will see that with the plus syntax, I default to creating a new sub page or creating a new sub page somewhere else, which we're going to go over in just a second. But I also have the option of creating an inline link to that create homepage task. So you have multiple different options for creating those inline links, but I find the double bracket method or simply pasting a Notion URL and choosing that mention option is the easiest way to do it. Uh, to be thorough here, there is one more linking option you have, which is hyperlinks. So with hyperlinks to web pages, uh, there's a few different things you can do. And I'm gonna come down here to reference to actually show you this in action. If I paste the URL to a web page, I can dismiss, I can also create a bookmark, which is going to create this little box like this, or I can even embed the web page in my Notion workspace. And it really kind of depends on whether or not the web page you're embedding supports this, but most do. And you'll see here that I have a nice mobile optimized view of this page here on my website embedded directly in my Notion workspace, which is pretty cool. Uh, last but not least, if you have some text, you can actually highlight that text and add a URL to it directly. So let's type Notion Fundamentals here. If I were to highlight this and bring up the little context menu, I can hit link and then I can paste that and link to the web page, getting myself a nice little hyperlink like I would get in WordPress or some other blogging platform. Now, so far, all we've done in this lesson is link to existing pages in our Notion workspace, but it is just as easy to create new pages or sub pages inside of our workspace as well. So now let's go over creating those and the different ways to do it. Uh, the first way is using the sidebar and even the sidebar gives you several different options. So the first one would be to uh, click this little plus button right next to the private area, or if this was a team workspace, I would also have a uh, team area up here and I would be able to do the same thing. And if I click that, it's going to create a new top level page. So we could just call that uh, top level page, or I can click the plus button next to any of the existing pages at any level here in the sidebar as well. So let's just say I wanted to create another chapter in this little book area. I could do that. I could call it chapter three. 
and now I have that page. Let's give it a nice little book icon. I'm gonna open it as a page and now you'll see it's sitting here in the sidebar as well. Additionally, at the bottom of the Notion window, and I'm gonna to have to actually change the size of my Notion window so you can see it, there's a new page button right here. And when you click this, it's a little bit different because you're going to get a blank page but you'll also see that it has a default destination and you can actually click this menu here and you can change the destination of this page. So I'm gonna go ahead and click writing here and let's just call this uh, blog articles. And now this page is created underneath the writing page and just like books, it is sitting here on the page as a page block. Now, if we don't wanna use the sidebar, we can also create pages very easily on the actual content area. So let me just make this sidebar a bit better of a width. And I'm gonna go back to my personal dashboard. And let's just say that I wanna create a goals page on my dashboard. So what I can first do is use the page block. So if we type slash and then type page, I'm gonna get that. And I can click here and I can create my page like I normally would. Now, just like the link to page block, this page block is an actual block. So it's going to take up an entire line within the column that we have it in and it's going to show up in the sidebar. We also have the ability to use the inline syntax to create sub pages as well. So maybe I didn't want this goals page on its own line. Maybe I wanted instead to have a line of text like don't forget your goals, but I want goals to actually be a new sub page. So that is where that plus syntax we went over a little bit earlier comes in. If I hit plus and then I type goals, I'm going to get a sub page that is actually on a line of existing text. I can click either sub page or I can click new goals page in, and this is gonna create a sub page somewhere else. So first I'll do this one. And unlike inline links to other pages, we are still going to get this linked in the sidebar because it does live on this page. So it's pretty much just like a uh, actual page block, except for it can be in line on an existing line of text. If I go in here, it's gonna be pretty much exactly the same as an existing page. The only thing to know is if you've seen me do tricks before where I turn a page block into something else. So for example, let's do page here. Let's just call this uh, cool stuff and list out some cool stuff. And if I come back, I can actually turn this page block into something like a toggle list and get the page's content inside that. If you create an inline subpage like this, you're not gonna be able to do the same thing because the block that it exists within on this page is actually a text block. So if you wanna do tricks like that, just make sure you use an actual page block. If you don't care and you wanna do something more wiki style where you're just creating page links inside of text, then you can go ahead and use that subpage inline syntax. So lastly, let's talk about the other option when creating subpages, which is creating the subpage in a different location. So if I were to use the plus syntax once again, and let's just say I wanna create a page called someday for tasks that I wanna do someday, but I don't think this should exist here. I want it to exist somewhere else. If I click new someday page in, I'm gonna get once again that search menu here, and I'm gonna pick ultimate tasks for Notion. And what this creates for me is an inline link to a new sub page that exists somewhere else. So again, because this is an inline link, I do not have it linked in my sidebar here. And if I click it and navigate to it, I've got a someday page that is, if we look at the breadcrumbs up here, inside of ultimate tasks for Notion. It's probably gonna be at the very, very bottom. And if we open up the toggle, it is linked here. So when we create that new sub page in option, it does become an actual page block. And uh, to prove that, let's just create a list item. Come back here and go ahead and turn it into a toggle list. So that's a breakdown of pretty much every way that you can create links and also sub pages inside of your Notion workspace. Going back to our personal dashboard, we pretty much replicated the exact template that we created in that whole template video. So in the next video here in Notion Fundamentals, we are going to be creating these linked databases and finishing this project up. As with every other lesson in Notion Fundamentals, this lesson has a written companion, which is a great reference if you ever forget anything. And you can find all of those lessons, all the written versions, video versions, and example files over at thomasjfrank.com slash fundamentals. That is the home and hub page for this entire course. And also on that page, you'll have the option of signing up for my Notion Tips newsletter as 
well. If you want to get notified via email and be the first to know about new tutorials and also new templates that I'm working on, you're definitely going to want to get on that email list. And when you do, I'll also send you a link to all of my current free templates so you can check those out and play around with them in your workspace. As always, you can ask me questions in the comment section down below or on Twitter. I am Tom Frankly over there and I do tend to respond quite a bit faster. If you did enjoy this video, if you learned something new, uh, hitting that like button for the algorithm is appreciated as always. And if you want to take your knowledge further, I've got more videos on this channel like this one right here on building that personal dashboard template from scratch, start to finish. You can check that out or building a habit tracker template. So check those two out if you are curious and I will see you in the next one.